Allie, government funding and raising the debt ceiling are obviously more urgent. So what can we expect today? Yeah, Steph, because this is once again a situation where there are the things that lawmakers can change and the things that they can't. In terms of the deadlines that they're dealing with, the things that they can change are the Build Back Better agenda. Yes, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has said that he wants to see this passed before Christmas. Politically, there might be a cost to not getting that done, but if they, if they push past that deadline, it's sort of no harm, no foul. They can finish that up when they finish that up. On the other two fronts, the debt ceiling and government funding, those are deadlines that can be moved. You see it there on your screen. On Friday at midnight, the government shuts down, and then in mid-December, the U.S. line of credit runs out. On the, on the government shutdown piece of it, the House comes back tomorrow. They could act on that as soon as tomorrow as well, making that move and trying to avert a government shutdown. And on the debt ceiling piece of this, the thing that's different than the last time that we did this news cycle just a few weeks ago is there's a lack of vitriol right now. We know that Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has met with Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. They have talked about the debt ceiling. We haven't heard much beyond that, but the vitriol and backbiting that we heard the last time that this came around is gone. So it's likely that we do see some kind of deal happen there as well. Yeah. Jake, Congress knew they were kicking the can down the road on these things. They could do it again realistically. How do they make any progress on Build Back Better when you've got a government shutdown and a potential default in your face? Yeah, that's the problem, Steph. I mean, they have these, as Ali noted, these these can't move deadlines. And I think even if they solve these, let's assume these are, are easy to solve. I'm not saying they are. They are. They are not. They're complicated. They still take up time. They still eat up time. And the Build Back Better agenda, the Build Back Better bill uh, that passed the House is going to change significantly in the Senate. And once it changes in the Senate, uh, once you get a deal, then it has to go to the floor, where it's going to be for a week, if not more than that. So. I would imagine that Congress is going to kick that funding deadline to sometime until January, and then they'll work on the Build Back Better uh, uh, agenda. But remember, Christmas is coming up. Lawmakers are going to want to get out of town. Uh, there are those competing pressures, though. They want to get this done before Christmas. They also want to get home for Christmas. So those are the two kind of dynamics. And Senator Heitkamp and Robert Gibbs will remember 2010 and 2012, we had these December rushes, which are never easy to deal with. This is something like that as we note this morning in Punchbowl News. It's a very difficult mess of issues that are all kind of entangled together. Heidi, we've got vaccines that work. American business is back and it's booming. And the hard infrastructure bill passed. Yet Democratic voters are losing motivation going into the midterms. What does Congress need to do? They need to get their work done. The bottom line is when the Democrats are in charge, even by a very slim min uh, minority of votes, They've got to produce results. And so it is time to get this done. It, this was completely predictable. Um, when they set a December 3rd timeline, I thought, that is a dangerous precedent to go to December 3rd. Now you're going to have to figure out if you can fund the government. If the government shuts down, there's only one party the public is going to blame. Um, the debt ceiling, I think, will get resolved. I think the question is, can Mitch avoid a filibuster on the debt limit and just let Democrats vote for it, um, which they're willing to do, increasing the debt limit. So there's a lot of work to get done. There's always a way to get it done within the time frame if there's a will. And by the way, I remember working almost on Christmas Eve. So it can be done. Um, just stay there, get it done, and you go home and, and take a victory lap. Then, Heidi, put the government shutdown aside. Congress did go through an enormous effort, Democrats did, in order to get this hard infrastructure bill passed. Now that it has, should they be laser beam focused on getting shovels in the ground and showing America what it can do? Yeah, and the problem that they have, Stephanie, is this should have been done sooner rather than later. They had a chance to take the momentum coming out of the Senate, which was bipartisan, pass it in the House and get it done. And they stalled it out waiting for the human infrastructure bill. Now we're stuck in the same spot. And so the messaging on this has been it's nothing short of um, uh, unimaginably horrible, um, but now it's never too late to uh, get the messaging right. And so get home, talk about what you've done, but get this other piece done. And for God's sakes, do not shut down the government. Robert, why are the president's poll numbers dropping? Getting the hard infrastructure bill passed was huge. Where we stand with COVID, huge. Our economic recovery, very good. Look at the jobs numbers. 
Yeah, it's a great point, Stephanie. We'll get a new jobs report at the end of the week. I just don't think right now people are looking at their economic health through a jobs report. I think they're seeing gas prices go up. I think they're seeing uh, their turkey dinners on Thanksgiving be more expensive. I think that's why you see the president today talking uh, to retail executives and uh, about supply chains. And I also think you understand and see the rise of this new variant plus the Delta variant that we're still dealing with. People want to wanted to feel a sense of normalcy going into this holiday season. And I think there was optimism mid-year that with vaccines, that could be the case. Uh, unfortunately, it, it hasn't materialized. Uh, I think while a lot of the president's agenda is popular, uh, I don't think the American people know much about it because, as Senator Heitkamp talked about, the process of this has overwhelmed the specifics of the substance. That's a messaging challenge for the White House and Democrats that they have to be focused on really over the next few weeks and also well into 2022, heading into the midterm elections. Robert, you're our communications guru. A lot of Democrats want Biden to be punching more, attacking Republicans more ahead of next year. Do you think he should be? Well, I think, Stephanie, at some point, the White House is going to have to make a pretty hard transition into making the midterm elections and the governing choices that he's having to make now a choice with what Republicans are proposing and what he is proposing, rather than simply a referendum on the Biden presidency. Look, Joe Biden used to tell Barack Obama that all the time in 2009 and 2010. Uh, it's the difference between being compared to the almighty and the alternative. Uh, so I think those were prescient words from then Vice President Biden. And I think you'll see them make that turn. Obviously, there's a lot of government business that has to get done in the next four, six, eight weeks. But I think once you get into the State of the Union, particularly, you're going to see a sharper, more contrasting President Biden.